Hi booktube, I'm here with, I don't know whether to call them weekly reads or current reads because I'm not uploading on the same day of the week, <laughs> uh, but I guess current reads I guess then makes the most sense. I'm just here telling you about books that I've read or am reading uh, recently. Um, let's start with, oh yeah, this. I got it from the library. <laughs> I read the first 50 pages and I went, I gotta buy my own copy. This is one of my favorite books of the year and I'm only 146 pages in it right now. This is amazing and I'm gonna demonstrate it by just like reading the first few lines of this. I gotta transfer over my over my sticky things. Um, so to give you some context, Swallowed uh, was written in 1966 uh, by Quebecois, so it was written in French and it is like it says it's one of the foundations of modern Quebecois li literature. Um, so, like, it's obviously a, a big book, but it hadn't been translated into English since 1968. Um, and I believe this book's from, like, 2012? No, 2020. 2020. It took, you know, 30-some-odd uh, years for, for this book to be retranslated back into English. And so we're following uh, Bernice Einberg, um, and she's a nine-year-old but I know a lot of people sometimes have trouble with young characters portraying like very adult emotions and thoughts and stuff like that I don't <laughs> um, I know that she's nine years old and it wouldn't make the 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 thoughts feel adult but they're immature at the same time like I couldn't see a 30 year old stuff 30 year old person that I would respect thinking these things, but a nine-year-old thinking these things, I have more respect for, because they have le less life experience and stuff like that, if that makes sense. <laughs> um, so we follow her, she's kind of this precocious young girl, um, I don't think you need to know much more than that. There's, it's, I'm just gonna read you the first chapter anyways. Not the first chapter, but, oh, maybe the first chapter, it's only like a few pages. Okay. Everything swallows me. When my eyes are shut, my own stomach swallows me, chokes me from within. When my eyes are open, what I see swallows me, smothers me from within the stomach of what I see. Everything swallows me up. The river is too great, the sky is too high, flowers are too fragile, butterflies too fearful. My mother's face is too pretty. My mother's face is pretty for nothing. If her face were ugly, it would be ugly for nothing. A face, be it pretty or ugly, is good for nothing. You look at someone's face, a butterfly, a flower, and you feel disturbed somehow, or even annoyed. When you let that happen, you get upset. There should be no faces, no butterflies, no flowers. Whether my eyes are open or shut, I am always enclosed. The space around me suddenly runs out of air, my heart tightens, and I'm overcome with fear. In the summer, the trees were closed. In the winter, the trees are bare naked. They say the dead are pushing up daisies. The gardener found two old barrels in his attic. Do you know what he did with them? He saw them in two to make four pails. He hit one on the beach and three in the field. When it rains, the water gets trapped in the pails. When they're thirsty, the birds fly down and drink from the pails. I'm alone and afraid. When I'm hungry, I push daisies down my throat and the hunger goes away. When I'm thirsty, I dunk my face into one of the pails and suck up the water. My hair unfurls into the water. I suck up the water and it's over. The thirst is gone as though I'd never been thirsty in the first place. You wish you were thirsty enough to drink the river dry, but after one glass, your thirst is already gone. In the winter, when I'm cold, I go inside and put on my big blue sweater. I go back outside, resume playing in the snow, and I'm not cold anymore. In the summer, when I'm hot, I take off my dress. My dress doesn't stick to my skin anymore, and I feel great, and I start running. We run in the sand, we run and run, and we don't feel like running anymore. We run ourselves bored. We stop, sit down, and start burying our legs in the sand. Then we lie down in the sand and bury our whole bodies. Then we get tired of playing in the sand. We don't know what to do next. We look around as though we were searching for something. We look and look, but we find nothing worthwhile. If you pay attention when you look around like that, you realize that what you're looking at is hurting you, that you're alone and afraid. You stand powerless against your loneliness and fear. Nothing helps. There are daisies for hunger, rainwater for first, but nothing for loneliness or fear. The more you try to soothe them, the more they struggle, the more they scream, the more they sear, the stratosphere sinks, continents collapse, and you're left to live in that void alone. I'm alone. I just need to shut my eyes to know it. When you want to know where you are, you shut your eyes. When you shut your eyes, you end up where you are, in the dark, in the void. My mother, my father, my brother, Christian, and Constance Chloris are there, but they're not where I am when my eyes sh are shut. Where I am with my eyes shut, there's no one but me. There's no need to care for anyone else. Everyone's elsewhere. 
When I speak or play with others, I can feel that they're outside, that they can't get in where I am, and that I can't get in where they are. I know all too well that loneliness and fear will take hold of me once more, as soon as my silence drowns out of all their voices. You shouldn't worry about what happens on the lands or the water surface. It changes nothing to what happens in the dark void where you are. Nothing happens in that dark void. Waiting is all there is, always. Waiting for you to do something to make it end, to get out. Others, that's far away. Others flee like butterflies. A butterfly is far away, as far as the stratosphere. Even when you hold it in your hand, you shouldn't worry about butterflies. You suffer for nothing. And here, there's only me. Um, yeah, and it talks about her family a bit more, but like, I was like, I like this. <laughs> I like this. So yeah, I got my own copy. Um, it's very interesting. Um, her primary relationships are with her family and uh, with this uh, best friend that we don't really get to see named Constance Chorus. Um, yeah, and it's interesting. Her father is Jewish and her mother's uh, Catholic and they've agreed that um, the first child will be Catholic and the second child will be Jewish um, and they kind of like separated the kids and try to keep them separate but the kids want to be friends. It's, it's really interesting. Um, yeah, and then her trying to push people away, but also breaking down and letting people in at the same time. Like, it's really, it's really good. Uh, yeah, I also read Doubt. Um, this was really interesting. So, I'm going to hold it like that. Um, so this is about a group of teenagers, I believe, that are playing this video game um, called Rabbit something. Rabbit dipped. And in the game, you're all rabbits, except one of them's a wolf and it goes around and killing people. I think it's kind of like Among Us, um, but this predates <laughs> Among Us. Um, so, um, yeah, the, uh, the, the game is that you're all rabbits and you have to figure out who the wolf is before you all die. Then they get kidnapped and put into this building and they find one of them dead and they gotta figure out you know, who's the wolf among them. Uh, it is very creepy, <laughs> very disturbing. I uh, hate that it ends on a cliffhanger because of course there's more volumes than this one. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna get the second volume uh, from the library um, and read that. And the other book I've been concentrating on is Redwall, Mossflower by Brian Jocks. Uh, this is the second book chronologically published um, in the series. I'm reading them chronologically. There's, it's a very confusing order. Um, yeah, I, I was looking, I found, uh, the third book chronologically published <laughs> in the thrift store and I bought it cause I really like this series. And, uh, I'm on the back, it lists like four or five other books that come before that book. And I was just like, no, wait, like I thought this was the third book and it is a third book. So I'm reading them as they were published, not in whatever order, <laughs> you know, they came up with after. And so this is uh, the first book um, we're following, um, no, this one's Martin, so it's Matteo in the first book. Um, he's like the, the mouse warrior who has to save the castle. Um, and this one we're following Martin, who is his, like, predecessor? I don't think he's, a, they're related. I don't believe so. I think they're just kind of, uh, Martin influences Matteo as a warrior. Um, so it's basically we follow mostly rodents. Um, I don't know what otters. There's otters, badgers, foxes, hedgehogs. I don't think there's any rabbits. Uh, there's cats. Um, yeah, all sorts of little critters um, in the forest um, as they are defending their kingdom. Um, so this one is actually the reverse. So we know in, from the first one that they are living in the castle now, the good guys. Um, and this one, we have Sarmina, who's this really mean cat living in the castle and trying to go after the little rodents and make them into slaves. Um, and we have to have, uh, Martin and Gomp and, oh, what's the hedgehog's name? One second, the hedgehog. Hedgehog. Name is Denny. Um, yeah. Following those three as they go on a separate adventure and then a group have to defend their home from Sarmina. Um, yeah, it is, it's for middle grade, I believe, or younger. Um, and it's really interesting. I read that he wrote these for um, blind kids. 
um, he was telling them these stories. So the descriptions are very um, well done in that he's not just describing how things look. He's describing smells, he's describing foods, he's describing how things feel, like like physically, like, you know. Um, yeah, so it's really cool. Um, descriptive reading. And they're very graphic, too. Like, one of my favorite characters, like, was there for, I think, like, three chapters, and then they killed him off. In a very violent way. <laughs> um, so, yeah. It's an interesting book that way. Um, yes. Uh, any other bookish news that I have is that I... Uh, redid my shelves, and they're completely random, almost completely random. I divided fiction and nonfiction on the ground when <laughs> I was doing it, and so I chose about, I think it works out to about 20, 22 to 25 fiction books, and then the rest are nonfiction, um, and then I divided nonfiction into nonfiction and religion, so I have two to three religion books, and then the rest are nonfiction. Um, and each shelf is going to be, each row, <laughs> each stack, because they're double stacked, is going to be a TBR for a month. But um, I'm going to do my September TBR shortly um, and explain that a bit more. Uh, so yeah, that is it. I'm going to include a few clips here. I went to Halifax. To be honest, I don't really recommend it <laughs> um, unless you stick to the harbor front because it is very uh, industrial, very confusing to get around. Uh, the GPS told me to turn right, and then there were like three different ways to turn right, and I turned, you know, the most right way, and what they wanted me to do was go straight, which slightly slears off to the right, so I really, really did not enjoy driving there. We actually ended up coming home. Uh, we were supposed to leave at 5 p.m. on Tuesday, and we ended up leaving at 9 a.m., <laughs> so yeah. Um, it wasn't, it wasn't the most enjoyable trip, but that was, it was interesting. I also don't understand, like, I'm gonna go on a little rant here, so if you don't care about me ranting about, like, Halifax and Maritimes and taxes and stuff like that, Halifax, I think, is, like, one of the biggest cities in the Maritimes, if not the biggest. There's, like, I think, like, 530,000 in their population, uh, which is huge. Like, where I'm from, the biggest city is, like, 100,000. <laughs> so, like, you know, not, not, not a lot of, like, it's quite quite larger so like and they have all this industry there so like they got a lot of tax money coming in right and it's a port city they've got to be getting money from the government for all that kind of stuff right I don't know where they're spending the money because like the one thing people told me to do was go to the Halifax library and go to the rooftop garden and I was like rooftop garden library like yeah and I'm gonna admit like the inside of the library really nice I would love to like take books out from that library <laughs> makes sense. Um, but the rooftop library was like 95% ragweed. And I'm like, great, like, you know, get coming looking everything on the ragweed. So, yeah, I'm just, and like, it, this wasn't, it wasn't pretty. Like, even the more industrial parts of Fredericton and Moncton are still not, you know, they, they still, still not ugly. If that makes sense. Anyway, so I've done enough ranting. Um, let me know um, what you're currently reading, and thank you for watching. That one took it back in the ocean. You want to? I'm just sitting here I got time It's clear to see From up here The world seems small We can sit together It's so beautiful You and me Meant to be in the great outdoor, forever free.
times I need to go. Take a step back.